Hello there everybody, welcome back to another video of mine. Today I'm going to be showing off my Frankenstein of an M1 steel pot. The reason I say that, because each of the parts is from a completely different year. So, and I just put it all together. Um, so I use this helmet for airsoft purposes and also, and also another note. I've been wanting to record and upload this video for a while. But I just been, I just got really busy and you know, I barely found the time now. So, but going forward from that, <clears throat> I'm, I'm going to start showing off the pieces. Well, first things first, I'm going to show off what's in the helmet band and all that. So, this is a bandage I got from, like, the first time I went near softing. And I just, it's just a memento, really. Nothing fucking, nothing really else from that. Does it give me away? Yeah, because it's white and it's a green helmet, so. Uh, and going, following up on that, we got this uh, death card here. So, yeah, call me cringe, call me far, whatever the fuck you want to call me. Mm, it's also another, like, uh, sentimental piece that I've just been having for a while now. And so I just wore it on my helmet since uh, the first time I went airsofting. That's really it. Um, I have seen some pictures of Marines or soldiers with a, with a type of playing card in their helmet. But, as you can tell... I, this really explains why they didn't wear it in their helmet that often. Because this is the aftermath of it getting hit with rain. And in Vietnam it rained a it rained a good a good chunk of the fucking year. And so the fucking car would just fall apart as shown with this one. So that so this is a cat eyes band. It was in, it was made like after Vietnam, and these little things, the cat eyes, they're supposed to glow in in night vision. But I just flipped it inside out. No one's gonna, no one knows. So that's what I fucking did. Or or you could just, to be sure, you could just cut these off, and you could just use it for like Vietnam purposes. What the fuck? Uh, next thing is the helmet cover so Mitchell pattern cover we got this at a surplus store for around 16 bucks which is an extremely good deal especially since it was used and it's original and you can find a brand new one off eBay for like 26 bucks I wanted to do that but I just thought for that price not really oh, and don't even get me started on the originals on eBay they charge the same price for one after Vietnam. Like, get the fuck out of here. If I'm going to be paying that much, it's going to be something original. But even then, I shouldn't be talking because this is from 1974. See if I can find the date on it. Yep, right here. So, oh yeah, ignore that. So, here's the sticker. I don't know if you could read that. So right there it says DSA 174, meaning this helmet, the helmet covers from 1974, and also a little bit of graffiti I wrote on it. Mm, trying to be, I guess I was just trying to be funny. Anyways, it's a 1974 cover, so I shouldn't be getting shit for it. I mean, if it's one from like 1959 or some shit, I would not even wear it. Oh, and, also, and moving on from the helmet cover onto the steel pot itself. So, it, this is a 1980s steel pot. It originally came with this type of chin strap. The fucking, what's it called? The chin cup chin strap. So, these were later designed for the pass gear helmet. The one, the Kevlar helmet that replaced that. And so, that's how you know if it's a post-Vietnam or... Vietnam and one steel pot. If it has this type of chin strap, then it's one from the 80s or 70s. Also, you could tell from the heat stamp with inside the steel pot. Alright, back to the M1. And so later on, I replaced it with an original uh, Vietnam War chin strap. So you can see it has the ball and hook closure. So, mm, it's a minor but major detail, if that makes any sense. Alright, moving on from the steel pot, we got the M1, the liner. So, 
Here, let me get it out real quick. So a problem with the liner that I couldn't figure out is what year it's from. I, I talked to someone and they sent me it's a... Uh, it feels definitely... It looks definitely past Vietnam. So maybe like around the late 70s or 80s. But even then I'm not entirely sure. I tried finding a date or a stamp on this but it's all faded. But another thing I forgot to mention. M1C liner. So this is an airborne liner. It comes with the... These A straps and it comes with the chin cup with the chin cup chin strap. <coughs> That's a mouthful. Um but and uh originally I didn't really want the original uh, original liner. I just saw it on eBay it was bidding for like thirty five dollars. I put forty and I just thought whatever happens happens. I'm not gonna win it. I literally just put it in just for fun, my bid. And then I woke up the next morning and it says, or I, the seller fucking messaged me saying, I got the item in a box with the sticker on it. Just send me the money and I'll send it. So I just said, fuck. So I just bought it. Although I am happy with it because I've been, I low-key did want it, uh, <clears throat> uh, airborne liner because it just looks cool with these, uh, little rivets. It's adjustable. And the inside of and the inside of it was slightly damaged, but I repaired it a little bit, and, or strengthened it, strengthened it at least. <coughs> <coughs> I strengthened it. I strengthened it at least, so shouldn't be ripping for a while. I say that as there's like a huge hole in it, and also did not come with the leather sweatband. This is a repro I got from my reproduction M1 liner. So as you can see, this is the inside of it, and it all goes together. So yeah, that's my M1 steel pot. Alright, see you next time.